Good evening, and welcome to the 2021 Town of Duck Candidate Forum, sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Dare County. We have opted for a fully virtual forum this year in the interest of the health and well being of our candidates and volunteers. I am Ginger Webster, coordinator for this forum. I'd like to thank the candidates as well as everyone in our audience for participating this evening. The League of Women Voters was founded 101 years ago by the leaders of the women's suffrage movement. Their goal was to educate newly enfranchised women who had finally won their right to vote after a 70 plus year fight. We are proud to continue their tradition of bringing candidates and voters together in this way. We are recording tonight's meeting so that more Town of Duck voters can see and hear their candidates before they vote. This recording will be posted on our YouTube page, our website, and other local outlets. Unfortunately, candidate Robert Mooney, incumbent, has had a death in the family and is unable to join us this evening, although he previously had agreed to participate. We extend our sincere condolences to him and his family. Mr. Mooney has completed vote411.org information, so voters can find more information about him at that website. Vote 411 goes live this Wednesday, October the 6th. I will now introduce the moderator for this evening, Marcy Reeves. Thank you, Ginger. Good evening. I am a member of the League of Women Voters of Dare County. I live in Southern Shores. The League is a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization. It encourages informed and active participation in all levels of government, works to increase understanding of major public policy issues, and influences public policy through education and advocacy. The League maintains a strict nonpartisan policy. It neither endorses nor opposes any political party or candidate. The League participates in the Positive Campaign Project and has requested that each candidate take the Code of Campaign Ethics Pledge. League volunteers participating this evening are our technical team comprised of League members Craig Merrill and Laura Singletary. Our question reviewer is Mary Jane Slazinski, and our timekeeper is Lorelei DiBernardo. Let me tell you about the candidates who are with us tonight. The town of Duck has five council seats up for election and eight candidates. As the coordinator explained, seven of the eight candidates are present tonight. The candidates for the council race are Ben Von Draun, challenger, Donald Kingston, incumbent, Jamie Bartlett, challenger, Joe Lakaitis, challenger, Monica Thibodeau, incumbent, Rob Mooney, incumbent, Sandy Whitman, incumbent, and Tony Ciano, challenger. So let's review the format for the forum. All candidates will have two minutes for an opening statement. The timekeeper will signal when the candidate has 30 seconds remaining. The timekeeper will signal with the stop sign if the candidate continues past the allotted time. Next, all candidates will participate in the question and answer segment, answering questions that voters submitted during the forum registration process. Questions may also be submitted tonight using the Q&A feature. Submissions should include the name of the questioner. So if you submit a question, please put your name. League reviewers have and will review questions for clarity to avoid duplication or personal attacks. These questions may be addressed to one candidate or all candidates. However, all candidates will have an opportunity to respond to any questions submitted if they care to. 
two minutes are allotted for responses. Again, the timer will signal the candidate when 30 seconds remains and display the stop sign if the candidate goes over the time allotted. Opportunities will not be extended to those who initially pass on a question. And finally, each candidate is entitled to a two minute closing statement. Before we started, we created a random order for opening statements. We will reverse that order for closing statements. We will begin now the opening statements from the candidates. Ms. Thibodeau, you are first. Thank you. Thank you, Marcy. And thank you to the League for hosting us all tonight uh, and for all the work that you do in the community. Uh, my name is Monica Thibodeau. Uh, as a way of introduction, I've been a resident of Duck for 33 years and a visitor many years prior. I own and operate Carolina Designs Realty, a local property management and sales company based in Duck that employs over 50 year-round employees and uh, hundreds of seasonal workers as well. I've been, I was active in the community prior to Ducks Incorporation with the Duck Civic Association and assist, assisted with the incorporation and have served on the town council since the first election in 2003. Uh, I've been involved in many community organizations on the Outer Banks uh, and currently including the Outer Banks Relief Foundation, Roanoke Island Historical Association and the Hospital Center Cancer Development Council. I'm very proud of what our town has accomplished over the past 20 years of incorporation. We've become a leader in an innovative coastal community that has operated very efficiently and progressively. We have been fortunate to benefit from grant funding that has allowed us to leverage our local funds on, a, on highly visible and beneficial programs and projects. We work well with our neighboring towns and counties. I'm running to continue this work. I feel my past experience will help those who are newer to the town and, uh, and understand our past decisions, all which is helpful in charting the course for the future. I am a consensus builder and a balanced decision maker and I look forward to continuing my service to the town. Thank you. Mr. Bartlett. Thank you. Good evening. First, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the League of Women Voters for organizing this forum and giving us the opportunity. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, okay. Your, your picture's still up, that's what I was asking. Um, giving us the opportunity to present our positions directly to the voters. It is a privilege for me to join my fellow candidates in participating. Although I'm new to the political landscape here in Duck, I believe that I bring a proven ability to collaborate with others to problem solve and move issues forward with a minimum of delay. I've proven my ability to lead men and women in my prior career with the Alexandria, Virginia Police Department. I spent 32 years there, rising to the rank of captain. I held several senior command assignments, including traffic, special operations, public information, and patrol divisions. I retired from the police department in 2014 and accepted a position with the Alexandria City Public Schools as director of safety and security. During my time with the police department, I attended college at night, earned a bachelor of science degree from George Mason and did graduate study at George Washington University. I spent my adult life in government service with the majority of that in the public safety arena. It is my desire to continue that service in Duck by serving on the town council. Duck has some of the same issues as any growing town, having doubled its population in the last 10 years. Some of these issues are traffic congestion during peak tourist season, trash, both the collection and littering that occurs on the beaches and in the neighborhoods, and meaningful communication with its citizens, both resident and non-resident. I hope to be able to address some of these issues tonight. Thank you for your time. Mr. Kingston. Let me start by saying that I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters arrange this candidate forum tonight via uh, the Zoom, and also thank the voters of Duck that are attending the Zoom function tonight. I'm the current mayor of Duck, serving in my fifth term, first elected in mayor in 2011. I served as mayor pro temp during my first term in the Duck Town Council, elected in 2009. I was a member of the board, Duck Planning Board in 2009. I've been active as a town volunteer since moving here in 2007. I currently represent Duck in the Derrick County Senior is formerly known as the Control Group and a Council Liaison to the DCBA. In 2017, I was elected to the North Carolina League of Municipalities Board of Directors, and I currently serve there 
also serving on the executive finance committees. In 2021, I was appointed to the board and elected president of the NC Local Leadership Foundation. I'm also an active member of the North Carolina Mayor's Association. I hold undergraduate degrees in mechanical engineering and business from the Rochester Institute of Technology, an MBA from the University of Rochester Simon School, and I'm a graduate of the Executive Development Program at Harvard University. I retired in 2007 after a 45-year business career, most recently as a Vice President Officer of Kelly Services. The greatest attributes that qualify me as a candidate to be elected to the Ducktown Council are my extensive leadership skills as a come to the last 10 years as your mayor, my detailed knowledge of the town of Duck and down council proceedings, my educational achievements, my varied business background and experiences. I'm physically conservative and responsible in addressing town issues. I'm ethical, fair, and honest, also sharing with several councils and staff a proven record of success. If elected, I will continue to support the town vision 2027, traffic, pedestrian, bicycle safety, stormwater, and trash issues, support beach management, building of the new public safety building, building of the mid Caratuck Bridge, and continue to be responsive and supportive to the key initiatives of the town in a fiscally responsible way. Thank you very much. Mr. Von Drain. I'd like to begin, like everybody else, I think it's awesome that you guys put this together, the League of Women Voters. It's great. I think this is one thing that's missing the most, getting more people involved in our politics and everything that's going on. Um, actually, I should introduce myself as Ben Vordren. I've been here duck most of my life. I've got my own business. I did Navy for 22 years. And the thing that I've seen go through duck has been great. I'm in an I love to interact with the people and I really want to serve our community and make this a better place and keep going forward with all the things we need to do. I love our vision plan that's been created because it's guidelines to go with and follow. I'm here for the people. I'm ready to listen to you guys. And I want to try to do everything I can to encourage you all to come to our meetings, be involved. That makes us a better community and we all work together. I'm also a person that I like to keep things short and sweet. And so I would say thank you and please vote for me. And I hope to be able to serve and uh, help out our community. Thank you. Mr. Whitman. I would like to thank the League of Women Voters for hosting this forum tonight and those watching. I'm Sandy Whitman and I'm a retired industrial electrical contractor from Kingston, New York. I owned and operated my own business for over 40 years. I've managed large building projects throughout the Northeast with a workforce up to 200 people. In 1980, my family and I started vacationing in Duck. In 1988, we built our home as our summer residence. In 2014, my wife and I moved here permanently. I volunteer for the town for the past 12 years for summer events, jazz festival, beach grass planting, clean sweep, and served as a member of the Camel Land Use Committee. I've also attended town council meet and planning board meetings. <clears throat> because of my interest in the town, I was appointed to serve on the Board of Adjustments in 2011 and the planning board in 2017. For the past two years, it's been my privilege to serve on the Duck Town Council. It has been a learning experience and a challenge at times, but rewarding to help our town of Duck to move forward in a progressive manner. During the time we have extend, expanded our town workforce, we have continued discussions with the Corps on construction of the public safety building, work to improve traffic flow, and collaborate efforts to preserve our ocean and sound shorelines. Doing all of this and still keeping our tax rates low and services up. Thank you once again to the league for hosting this event. Thank you. Mr. Blackitis. Thank you. I'd like to uh, congratulate the uh, the League of Women Voters as well. Thank you for having this. Um, <clears throat> I've been living in Duck now for uh, probably 20 years, coming here many years before that. I'm a member of the planning board for 14 years. Uh, I've been chairman of the planning board now for about seven years. I've served on the first land uh, use plan that we had way back in, I guess it was 2005 or seven, you'll remember that. Uh, and and uh, 
I have many hours volunteering for the town, doing various things like planting, picking up garbage, and uh, doing a lot of other things. Um, I am a graduate of Lafayette College in Eastern Pennsylvania. I'm an engineer. I'm, a, I'm an electrical engineer. I'm a pilot. I'm a flight instructor. My wife and I have over 20 years in the town. And we love the town of Duck. I have decided to run for the council because I will support the Duck residents. The Duck residents, the industrial owners, the non-residents, as well as work with all members of the town council. I'm new for the council, so I don't know what they're up to, but I aim to find out if I get elected. That's it. Hmm? Mr. Siano. I uh, want to thank the League of Women Voters and the people who are listening in. Um, and I'm a candidate for Ducktown Council. Uh, my wife and I, along with our family, have been coming to Duck for over 40 years. We've owned a house for 33 of those years and made it our permanent residence in 2015. Uh, we have a deep attachment to Duck and its community and what it represents and offers to residents and visitors. We live here, we shop here, we go to church here. My daughter was married here. Duck is a place where people come, relationships are established and deepened. It's a very special and unique place and it's a very quaint ocean to sound community with a real small town village feel. I'm running for town council because I love and appreciate this community and want to give back on my time, talents, and experience. I'm a retired business executive. Uh, I retired from uh, Giant Food Stores, a $5 billion retail company, as president and CEO. Uh, during that time, I had responsibility for budgets, um, people, strategy, vision, mission, uh, growth of the company, managing people. Um, if elected to the town council, uh, I promise that I will put those skills to work for you the residents, the property owners, both resident and non-resident. In fact, that's my six commitments. One, fully representing the interests of resident and non-resident property owners, assurance that all elected and town paid officials uh, have a consumer friendly orientation. Uh, maintenance of duck is a quaint family owned, family owned um, and, and, and uh, pedestrian friendly seaside community, physical responsibility, I promise as a steward, I will mindfully and purposefully use your tax revenues and I'll support our most important resources, the ocean, the sound, our business community, the boardwalk and support our safety, public safety uh, operations. Um, full transparency, honesty and integrity are utmost in my mind. Thank you very much. I hope I can count on your support. Okay. Now we will have questions submitted in advance from the voters. So the first question comes from Scott Kessler. It is, what are your priorities for the town over the next year? Mr. Blackitis. Thank you. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> it would be hard for me to tell at this particular moment because I'm not on the council yet. I think anybody <laughs> thinks they know what's been going on in the town or on the council, um, needs to think a couple times. When I get on the council, if I'm fortunate enough to do that, um, I will participate. Um, it's a very hard question to answer. The last couple items that you mentioned, will you mention them again, please? I'm sorry, do you want me to repeat the question? No, just the last part of it. What are your priorities for the town over the next year? Okay, so as I said, uh, I really don't have any priorities until I get on the council. My, my, uh, my quest here is to become a council member and to support everything that's happening in the town of Duck at this particular time. Ms. Thibodeau. Uh, thank you. Um, priorities over the next year, we have the uh, Beach nourishment project to oversee and uh, making sure that um, that everyone is informed about that and and understands the the me mechanism and and uh, the, the visitors are aware. Um, I'll also uh, would hope that we could get the um, phase four of the um, pedestrian plan underway with the uh, with the 
BRIC grant that we've been trying to attain, obtain, which would uh, be a large project, a large capital project that would definitely disrupt the town for a small amount of time, hopefully over the off season. But again, communicating about what we're doing, uh, hopefully that will happen. Um, I think uh, projects related to more education about storm management and uh, stormwater management would be another area. And then all along, we're continuing to, um, as a council, um, oversee the finances, um, improving processes, welcoming these new employees, trying to bring everybody along uh, that we've got with our new finance officer, our new uh, new public safety of officers, and hopefully a new planning uh, coordinator uh, to work in the community development office. So there's always um, moving forward uh, with new, uh, you know, with improving the way we're doing things, uh, but these large capital projects are also going to be looming and we just need to keep everybody informed and uh, uh, oversee these and keep uh, make sure that everything's going according to plan. So thank you. Mr. Vondren. The question is, what are your priorities for the town over the next year? My priorities are to work with everybody, the town offices, the council, and the people we represent. Uh, the priorities are coming up. I think Monica put it very well. We have some things coming up that we all need to look at and make sure we're all on the same page. I do believe the town does a great job of putting out the information and getting things out and getting things done. Um, and the biggest thing is, again, listening. That's what we're here for as a council member is to listen to what everybody has to say. And I really would greatly appreciate input from people to help steer us. Um, those are probably the biggest priorities. It's, I'm going to call it teamwork. And I learned that from 22 years in the Navy, working with a bunch of different people, different uh, Navy CBs. We had so many different projects we worked on. And every project that we worked with had its, I'll call it situations and rewards from getting it done and seeing the finished product. And I hope you get that experience and uh, do this for the town of Duck and everybody involved. Thank you. Mr. Ciano. Yes, thank you. Um, I think, first of all, we have a vision 2027, which uh, I think has got a lot of excellent things. And there's a set of priorities that are going to be in place moving toward that. And I would certainly be supportive of that. In addition, I've been out um, canvassing and talking to a lot of the residents in the town of Duck, gathering their input and their opinions uh, and trying to understand what they think is important, because that will be my priority. I think I've talked to over 50 residents so far and will continue to do so throughout the course of the campaign. Um, the things that I think are most important on our residents' minds and that I will be focusing on, one is stormwater management. They want to know if there's anything we can do about it, what it is and how and, and what we're doing there. The second thing would be traffic congestion. Everybody understands that this is a problem that's deeper um, and requires things like mid Curatuck Bridge but they also want to see some things that relate to short-term things, such as an extension of our sidewalks and all of our walking trails. Um, an ambulance and EMS, they'd love to see an ambulance and EMS placed in Duck permanently. That's something that would be on my priority list. Um, physical responsibility, uh, just a concern, the budget has doubled over the last five years. Property taxes have not, but spending has. And so they're looking for, you know, just good, stewardship and management. And the last thing I hear a lot about is trash pickup schedule and management of that. Um, they'd like to know what's going on and how that can be improved. So those would be some of my priorities that I have so far based on what I've heard from residents. As I continue can canvassing, I'm sure that'll get adjusted or, or re-emphasized. Thank you. Mr. Bartlett, the question is, what are your priorities for the town for the next year? Thank you. Um, I, I agree with uh, the other candidates, some of the things that they've said, said, we have to continue the projects that are already in place, already in the pipeline for the town of Duck. Um, but in the short term, in the next year, I think one of my biggest priorities would be to build relationships with, uh, with staff, with, with uh, residents here in Duck, and with, uh, with the other candidates, with the other folks that are on the council. Um, I also would pay attention to traffic. Um, I think traffic uh, this summer was was awful, 
and we need to we need to do something to alleviate it if we can. Um, we need to we need to look at other places that have these problems. We don't have to reinvent the wheel here. Um, we need to find something that worked somewhere else and maybe try it here. We we need to try some of these things. I think um, trash is another issue that that maybe could be dealt with in the short term. Uh, in terms of how it's collected and 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 how it's how it's picked up from the ground, the, the littering. Uh, also, communication, um, establishing good two-way communication uh, between the council and the residents to alleviate any of the feelings that any of these folks may have, particularly the the non-resident property owners, about not being heard. Um, those would be my priorities. Mr. Kingston. Back in 2012, we started a visioning process in the town of Duck. We revised that in 2017. I think one of the top priorities going into next year for the council will be to revision our 10 year plan, taking us to 2032, and also establishing three to five year goals. As Monica stated earlier, we have some major projects that are going to take our attention as we move forward. Each nurse is going to a big one next summer, a brick project where we're going to raise the road on 12, put a living shoreline in and uh, redo the sidewalks on the west side uh, near the uh, Sunset Grill. And of course, short term, we've got issues with trash collection, traffic, and stormwater management. I think those will become priorities of the council in the short term. But I think over the longer term, I think we need to be visionary. I think we need to make sure that we have the plans in place and think of the future as we move out through time. Yes, we'll, we'll address short term issues, but I think longer term, I think uh, planning needs to take place. We need to revise that 10 year plan and uh, remain fiscally conservative and respectful of our taxpayers. Thank you. Mr. Whitman. Thank you. I, like everybody's been saying, I think trash is one of our, the public's big uh, problems right now. Also the non-resident property owners feel they're not being heard. Um, to communicate with them a little bit better. Um, one of the other, the big project of the brick grant, along with the living shoreline and our sidewalks, uh, that's hopefully will be done next year if we receive our grant. And the forward looking is for the long, is the uh, town public safety building, which is dearly needed for our police and fire department. Uh, and just keep our town, try to keep our taxes low and still be able to do these projects. Thank you. I think we're up to the next question, which comes to us from Nancy Cavanis. And her question is, describe how you see your role as a member of the town council. Mr. Kingston. That's an interesting question because my role over the last 10 years has been mayor, hoping to become a, another member of the town council and be collaborative with the other members and move the town forward. Um, I would be, basically, I'm a, I'm a known person. Uh, people know my capabilities. They know my leadership skills. They know where I stand on certain issues. Um, I would be a collaborative partner to the rest of the council. And uh, I, that would be what I would do moving forward. I would also actually maintain, if I was in the mayor position, maintain interaction with the other towns, county and state officials. Uh, I think that's an important part for a mayor. Uh, we don't know who's going to be on council and who's going to be mayor, but I think that would be a priority for the council to maintain those relationships. Thank you. Mr. Bartlett. I think uh, I think that the the council functions to give vision and direction to the to the town manager and the and the employees of the town. Um, and and that's that's how I see that. I, I also see council members as building relationships. Again, I'll go back to that with each other and with with the residents in the town and and to with the other jurisdictions. A lot of our problems that we have, in particular traffic, we can't solve without the help of the other the other folks: Currituck, Southern Shores, Kitty Hawk, uh, and so forth. Um, so I, I yeah, I think uh, the council provides strategic vision and leadership to the town. And, and then there's, uh, there's the personal part. Thank you. So the question is, describe how you see your role as a member of the town council. Mr. Whitman. I feel my role with the town council is for the leadership that we give to our town manager. Um, 
our, our major projects, whatever we can do to keep the non-resident property owners and residents informed of what's going on in the town over the next two years. Thank you. Mr. Siano. Yes, um, the Duck Town Council really has one employee and that's the town manager. And so our job is to provide he and his team um, with the support, the guidance, the vision, mission, and strategy that they need so they can do their job delivering the services to the town of Duck. So I would be very supportive uh, of them and would work closely with them so they can do their job. Sometimes it's helping them, sometimes it's providing what they need, what they need. sometimes it's getting obstacles out of the way so they can do their jobs. Um, I would work to build relationships and collaborative uh, means of working, looking for consensus with my fellow town council members. Um, I would work hard to communicate with all of the constituents and stakeholders that uh, we represent as town council members. Um, and I would, I would work hard to do that to make sure I'm representing all of the constituents. It's, it's a three-legged stool in my opinion. There's um, the, the, the business community, the property owners, um, that, and, and uh, us as the taxpayers and residents. And if one of those legs collapses, the stool falls over. So I would work hard to make sure all three legs are strong. Okay, the question is, describe how you see your role as a member of the town council, Ms. Thibodeau. Uh, thank you. Um, my role as a member of the town council would be to help guide the town through informed decisions. Working closely with the town manager, who we've heard is our one main link to the professionals that work for the town, uh, but working with fellow council members as well. Um, I've uh, always asked a lot of questions at town meetings because I know that our meeting minutes are very uh, detailed. We're very lucky to have a town clerk who takes very detailed notes, meeting minutes. And so by asking these questions, I can help clarify what the points are because sometimes we're discussing some pretty complex things. So I'll continue to ask pointed clarifying questions so that we can all understand what's being discussed. I will be available to answer questions for anyone who an, uh, asks. Um, I completely agree that uh, we have several stakeholders in this community and um, the least of which is the non-resident property owners. I mean, not the least of which because we have, we have residents, we have business owners, we have non-resident property owners uh, and everyone is important in this town. Um, very available, very transparent in our meetings. Um, I feel as though we've, we've really done a very good job of discussing things very openly. We've been an expanding town, yes, in size and popularity, uh, but our core values haven't changed. And I would like to envision the town council as continuing projecting these core values inclusive of all the stakeholders. Thank you. Mr. Blakaitis. Repeat the question, please. Describe how you see your role as a member of the town council. Well, if I'm lucky enough to become elected to the town council, <clears throat> I, I think my, my initial role would be to absorb as much as I can from the duties of a town council. <coughs> um, similar to what I did when I first got onto the planning board. It takes a while to learn about everything that's going on, and it, uh, <clears throat> it, it, it would be my duty to uh, listen, learn, work with the town. Mr. Von Dran. First and foremost, I'm a representative voted into council. I want to listen to the people, make decisions on what needs to make our town move forward in a better in a um, peaceful way, work with all the town council members. We're a team. And then as I stated before, we have the town manager and get the town offices, get everybody on board. We work as a team. My role would hopefully be a functioning part of that team and make all that work. Thank you. Okay, so about the next question, we wanted to note that we received multiple similar questions like the next one, uh, but this comes from Lynn Alterman. Traffic through Duck has been a continuing issue. What would each candidate propose to alleviate the problem? 
First, Mr. Whitman. First, I'd like to say that the town has uh, hired a traffic engineer to study the traffic. There was a survey done in August of this year. And the other uh, way to relieve this traffic is get the government to build the mid Currituck Bridge and stop all the lawsuits that are going back and forth and get it built. And we all see the uh, traffic problem in Duck on the weekends during the week. If that would relieve some of this problem. And basically I would say that I would have to wait to see what our traffic consultants have to say uh, with the study they're doing right now before I could really give you a, a good reason, a good answer what we could do in our town. Thank you. So traffic through Duck has been a continuing issue. What would each candidate propose to alleviate the problem? Mr. Vaughn Drawn. First heard that question, I thought it was a trick question because we want all of our visitors and people to be here in our town and enjoy our town. The traffic, there's one street in, one street out. There's only so many solutions to that problem. I'm not sure there's gonna be the easy answer to make that happen. And then there's gonna be some tough decisions to make. And I'm sorry, this cat, it always wants to be up on my lap. Um, excuse me. Yes, with the traffic and the, all the people, there's only so many things we can do that we have control over. There's studies been done, there's studies going forward. I've been here most of my life. <clears throat> to say there's a one-stop question or one-stop fix, there's not. I keep hearing things, the mid Caratuck Bridge. I hope it's not a fantasy. I think that would help but still people love to come to our town. We want people to come to our town. So I think it's somewhat of a trick question. We do need improvements. It'll take time to figure out what's the right and correct process to go forward with this. Thank you. Mr. Blakaitis. Thank you. Uh, at this time, I will also wait for the results of our uh, pe people who did the uh, the survey for us. Um, I'm not sure what we're going to get from them. Uh, that's a very difficult question. Uh, I don't think that right now I have any solutions for the traffic. I don't think anybody has any solutions for this traffic that, that could be reasonable right now. But we can follow it up. We've had this for a long, long time. And as Ben said, there's only one road in and one road out. So that's how I feel about it. Mr. Bartlett? So I, I personally experienced how bad the traffic uh, has become this summer. And we, I feel like we do need to do more to manage traffic. Um, I think the fact that a traffic study has been commissioned is, is, is a great thing. Um, I think it probably would have been better had it been commissioned when the traffic was at its worst rather than a month later. But we, we work with what we, what we have. Um, I think in the meantime, uh, we need to get recommendations, ideas from citizens, business owners, public safety. Um, and, and, and again, I would continue this study when the traffic is at its worst, which is typically July uh, in, the, in that time frame. Uh, any real solution to the problem is going to require collaboration with neighboring towns, rental companies, vacationers, and our own citizens. Um, we, have to, we have to examine new and different ideas like maybe using crossing guards and in, in in the village actually um, some type of mass transit maybe buses or trolleys to encourage people to get out of their cars and and come to town in 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 a different manner um, we uh, we need to remain open to new ideas by engaging the public in the process and and again i'll go back back to something i said earlier we need to look at what other places have done to alleviate this. We're not the only town in the United States with one road in and one road out. Um, we, can, we can look at some of these things that have been done and maybe we can incorporate some of these ideas. I have a lot of experience with this stuff from my prior job, which I was, I was commander of the traffic division in the police department. And it was a very urban area and there were always traffic problems. I'm not a magician, but, but I do have some ideas that, that might help. Thank you. 
So the question is traffic is a continuing issue. What would you what would you propose to alleviate the problem? Ms. Thibodeau. Thank you. Uh, yes, I've been uh, living here as long as I have. I've seen the growth in the traffic issues. Uh, we, we saw it, you know, any hurricane evacuation, uh, uh, continuing the, the popularity of our town, uh, the, the fact that uh, there was a time when they wanted to widen the road uh, all the way through town. And, and, you know, we kind of fought that while we were pushing very hard for the mid Kurachuk bridge. Um, we are, a, you know, a product of this, of this geography of this two lane, three lane road that's running through the town. Um, but I do think we've seen, uh, and we've, and with our sidewalks, that's brought a lot of pedestrians in through town, which is, I think has been fabulous because that most, a lot of people will stay out of their cars and walk into town and that's been a wonderful thing to see. I think that's alleviated traffic, but we've got not only one road in and one road out, but we're one road through because there's a ton going on in Kerala and that's how you get to Kerala is through duck. So with the technology that's been, um, and of course we've had, you know, crosswalks added and with, with the sidewalks and, and those are being reevaluated. I'm really glad that everyone on the council um, like the idea of doing the study. Yes, I agree. It could have been done earlier than summer, but it, you know, was and, and can be continued to be done. What we kept also is a lot of new technology. And so we've set, got car counting that started with license plate readers, and that's been phenomenal data. That's even been more refined. Those, those, those um, data collecting uh, devices have, have improved even over the last five years. And we've got a lot there. One idea that I presented a few uh, council meetings ago was the idea of, of um, local cameras so that folks at any time could go online and see what the traffic situation is and that might help keep people informed and off the roads until it was more opportune time. Lots more to be done on the issue. We'll continue to work through it and uh, do what we can, but I've been very involved in it and we'll continue to, to work through it. Mr. Kingston. Unfortunately, we're a victim of our own success. Uh, anybody who vacations up and down the eastern shore of, of the United States knows that every beach attracts so much traffic. And we've been so successful in Duck that we have the traffic. And it's unfortunately designed as a two-lane two -lane road going north. Kerala, as, as Monica just said, has exploded from a standpoint of, of population. Duck itself has doubled in population. And because of COVID, we're bringing more people into the Outer Banks and into Duck because it's, it's looked at as a safe haven. Uh, we did a study, 2013-2014, uh, comprehensive pedestrian study, and it took us, when we're still implementing the final phase of that, so any plans we come up with, it's going to take us probably effectively a couple of years to implement. I think the study we're doing now is what we need from a standpoint of analysis. It'll be an update on the previous uh, uh, studies we've had to put on, on traffic. I don't have a short-term solution. Um, I think we need to continue to work with uh, Currituck County, with Southern Shores, with Kitty Hawk, um, because in fact, uh, you know, we're not the only problem. It's a problem coming up through Southern Shores. Uh, then it does open up, but there's a lot of traffic going north. So I think that in fact, the council needs to analyze and understand and talk to our consulting engineers. And we can put in place, I believe some short-term solutions over the next year and perhaps alleviate some of this traffic uh, next summer, but it is inevitable we're gonna have traffic. Thank you. Mr. Ciano. Yes, um, I think it is inevitable that we're gonna have traffic. Uh, we have a couple of different kinds of traffic. You know, we have the weekend traffic, which is everybody trying to get north of us into Kerala, which is growing and continues to grow. Really, the only way we're gonna be able to alleviate that in a significant way is the mid Kuratuk Bridge. We need the mid Kuratuk Bridge, not only for traffic, we need it for safety and evacuation. So I urge everybody, the town council and, and government will lobby for that. I urge everybody who's listening in to urge their neighbors to continue to lobby. We need that. Beyond that, we have the traffic that's caused when people decide to go shopping or the weather is bad that day and it backs up both ways up and down, up and down duck. That is a very pernicious problem, one that's going to be difficult to deal with. It happens, as Mayor Kingston said, in every town that's a great town. If you've been to Nantucket, the Hamptons, Naples, Florida, Agunquit, Maine, it, the same thing happens in all of those towns. There are things we can do in addition to what we've done, and we've done a lot, uh, to improve that. We could look at synchronized crossing 
somehow at the crosswalks using guards so that we don't have people randomly doing it. Um, we could look at with the new quote, the new normal where people aren't necessarily tied to Saturdays and Sundays anymore. I know we've tried Friday turnovers. Maybe we can try to reinforce that. Maybe do Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday turnovers and give sort of incentive for, for people to try that. The traffic study is going to be very important. I'm hoping that that's going to yield us a lot more helpful information. Um, I think there are things we can do. Um, extending the crosswalk, I'm sorry, the uh, walkways, as well as the bike paths on both the east and the west side, north and south, all the way through town, wherever is feasible, is, is critical and that will help a lot. So I think there are some, some things that we can do as we, as we wait for the results of this study and as we continue to push for the mid Currituck Bridge. Thank you. So the next question comes from Douglas Brook. Do you support limiting expansion of commercial development in Duck? Ms. Thibodeau. Question is, do I support limiting expansion of commercial development in Duck? Correct. Um, my understanding, Duck is, is, is fairly built out. Uh, residentially and commercially. There are, um, it, uh, expanding our commercial district would require rezoning. I'm not in favor of, of any rezoning to expand our commercial uh, development areas. Uh, there are a few undeveloped portions of commercial property uh, that, are, that, that remain undeveloped. Um, or have very limited development on them. Those are very small individual pockets. Um, I think our village area and our outlying commercial uh, CS, commercial district one, as, as we see at the Sanderling and the small pocket we have over by uh, Norbanks and the village table and tavern are small pockets of commercial. Uh, those, are, um, those are not expandable, I would not, be in favor of, of changing any of the zoning that we have. Uh, the Army Corps property, uh, when we became a town, we zoned it as a um, preservation property so that if it ever did get sold by the Army Corps, it would not be a commercial area. So I think our commercial areas are, um, are, are fine the way they are, uh, and I don't see any reason to expand them. Mr. Siano. Yeah, I can't really add much to what Monica said. I would be in total alignment with that. I think uh, we have enough commerce right now. The, the few pockets that are available will someday get developed, but there's no need, in my opinion, to expand our, our commercial zoning beyond where it is now. Question is, do you support limiting expansion of commercial development in Duck? Mr. Kingston. I agree with what Monica said up front. I mean, I think we have limited commercial today limited availability for expansion. I would not be in favor of expanding the commercial district. Uh, I think there will be some redevelopment in areas, but they're gonna be controlled by, by ordinances and by zoning. So I think we, moving forward, I think we have what we may have. There may be a few more developments, but I don't think they'll be significant. I would, I would not be in favor of expanding the commercial areas. Thank you. Mr. Vorndren. I do not support uh, growing the commercial areas and stuff. Everybody's put it pretty well. And a phrase I used to like to use and still like to use is we're at the right size for that. Further expansion, I don't see a need for that in the commercial zone. Um, that's my answer. I don't support okay. it. Okay. Um, so the question is, do you support limiting expansion of commercial development in DUC, Mr. Whitman? No, I think our village commercial is the right size and pretty much I'd say over 95% built out. There may be some changes in our village commercial area with uh, some of the buildings that might be changed out, but be limited in size to the size of the new buildings they could build on it. And our two outlying areas to me are pretty much built out. And no, I would not uh, want any more commercial districts in our town. Mr. Bartlett? In general, I agree with what everyone else has, has said here. I've, I've learned to never say never, but, but uh, I think at this point in time, um, expansion would not, be, would not be a good thing. Mr. Blakaitis? Uh, I would agree with Monica. I would agree with the mayor. I agree with everyone else who, who, who made their 
opinions noticed on this or noted on this. Those of, those of you who have attended our meetings at the planning board know that every time something comes up to expand the commercial district, we have an awful time approving it. One way or another, we've got to make many, many arrangements and, and give them all kinds of things to get it through. Uh, we may someday be taking houses away if we wanna expand this, but I don't think that that's, that's a reality as well. So I would agree. No, do not. I do not approve of that at all. Okay, the next question is from Jane Lindley. Water encroach. This is a little uh, longer question. Water encroachment is a problem for both Oceanside and Soundside homeowners. The Oceanside has the nourishment project to combat water erosion. As a council member. What policies or programs would you propose to restore sound side marshes and mitigate water encroachment to protect our homes and property values? Mr. Bartlett. As a, as a new person coming to council, um, I may not have enough information to answer this completely, but uh, I think there's been, been mention of this living shoreline project. And I think that, that we, have to, we have to pay attention to those things, look for grants so that we can restore the shoreline and, and build it up to keep water from encroaching on, on the sound side. Thank you. So the question is what policies or programs would you propose to restore sound side marshes and mitigate water encroachment to protect our homes and property values. Mr. Kingston. First of all, I think we have to differentiate between the ocean and the sound. On the ocean, we basically have um, public trust. And so we do have control over the ocean. We do have the ability to put sand on the beach and build the dunes. We do not have the same uh, responsibility or authority on the sound. But at the same time, I think, uh, as was just mentioned, the Living Shoreline, which is becoming a town project, which we're going to put up near the between the Prudential Building and the Sunset Grill, as an example of how we can control water and more standpoint of the council and of the staff to look at, in fact, what we might be able to do or suggest within, you know, March restoration. We do have very low spots going north. Um, and I think that it would be worthwhile for the town to look at that because we do have basically encroachment happening. We know that it is being measured. Um, I don't have an, an easy, easy answer for that, uh, but we also have to understand that we do not have total authority over, over the sound front as we move <laughs> through duck. So my suggestion is it's a worthwhile uh, endeavor, I think for town staff and town council to look at as we look at our vision towards the future and look at controlling storm water and controlling basically water encroachment. Thank you. Mr. Ciano. Yes, I, th I think that, um, you know, to the extent possible, restoration of the marshes and living shoreline would be very beneficial and very helpful. As I said before, the sound and the ocean are two of our most important resources. So I think that's important that we maintain a good, healthy, uh, natural environment there on the sound. Um, don't think that's going to help much with stormwater management, though. I mean, we've got a problem here. We've got a fully developed, you know, ocean to sound, for the most part, situation with, um, you know, a water table that continues to rise. And when we get heavy rain, there's no place for the water to go. There are things we can do that are kind of, you know, uh, easy and simple. But I think we really have to take a hard look at stormwater management. And I understand there's a study going on now, and I think that's important because we're going to have to do something uh, to deal with that, or we're going to have an increasingly worse, worse problem. Uh, could be we have to do a whole stormwater management system that includes filtration so we can discharge that water, clean water somewhere in order to deal with this problem. Mr. Blackaitis. Uh, again, um... I approve with what's been said, but speaking about the, the sound, 
particularly. Uh, those of you who have followed events at the uh, council, those of you who have followed our events at the planning board, know that we have a very difficult time convincing people not to put a bulkhead up. We're, we're, we're having problems in the town right now with bulkheads and putting a bulkhead up is the worst thing that you can do with the sound. It completely stops the shoreline from doing anything. What we have been advocating is definitely uh, living shorelines. Uh, there are a lot of properties here that are absolutely perfect for a living shoreline. And yet when we try to convince the owner of such, uh, we get pushback. We get a lot of pushback. We even get attorneys. Uh, so we've got to continue what we do. We've been somewhat successful. Uh, we've got to get rid of bulkheads if we can, and we've got to go to, to uh, living shorelines whenever possible. Um, it is something that we have been working on in, in, in the planning board uh, every time something comes before us, but it's not always possible to do it. Uh, and then uh, what happens sometimes is uh, they go away mad and they do something they're not supposed to do anyhow, and then the town has to go there and make them take it out. So yes, uh, as far as uh, groundwater goes, we've been trying to do a lot in the town uh, with the groundwater, getting rid of it, moving it, make things drain, drain more easily and, and, and working with components that help us do that. Um, we're fortunate in Sanderling because our houses don't occupy the whole land. So we, we've got a decent amount of that, but we still have problems here too. Thank you. As a council member, what policies or programs would you propose to restore Soundside marshes and mitigate <laughs> water encroachment? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I, I, th I thought you were starting a whole new question. No, <laughs> to protect our homes and property values. I, I'm repeating the question because that, there are quite a few of you. Uh, next up, Mr. Whitman. I, I would have to agree with most of the uh, previous speakers about it. Uh, I know that the town has tried to put a living shoreline in behind town hall for a number of years. And the conservationists in Cama have shot them down a number of times due to the different kinds of species of, of uh, plants that are existing there that they wouldn't allow them to do anything with. Uh, the living shoreline that we're putting in uh, between Resort Realty and Bearer Island would be a great example for the people in the community to see after it's built, to see what they could do with their own properties. Um, I feel that sooner or later, the town is gonna to have to do something for these property owners along the sound front. But like uh, Mayor Kingston says, we don't control that land like we do with the ocean. Thank you. Mr. Vondren. Things I would do and policies, I would listen to the soil and water from the county. They have programs out there that our town has adopted and so on and so forth and gone through. I definitely believe in listening to what everybody has to say. This issue with the bulkheads and living shoreline. I would learn from it. I'd watch whatever projects we go forward with and do to get my judgment and, my, and see what I see and get it out to the community. It's communication and education. Um, there's so many things that can work. There's so many things that could work. And then the point blank is, if you're looking to protect the property, I think that the image out there is that bulkhead is there and it's gonna keep the person's property safe. I go back to education, listen, learn, and watch what happens. And watch, we have departments out there, government sources. And again, I mentioned soil and water right here in Dare County, that they've been pretty proactive in coming up with some uh, policies or some programs, some uh, grants, if I remember right. Uh, not sure how many people have taken advantage of that, but I hope they have. Um, so that's what I would do. Ms. Thibodeau. 
Thank you. I'm sorry I, I jumped in earlier. I was thinking we were moving on. But no, I, I agree with what I've heard uh, from the other candidates this evening. Um, particularly, uh, we've seen, uh, we, we really got excited about doing a living shoreline behind the town property, as, as um, Mr. Whitman had said. And uh, we uh, really ran into a ton of stumbling blocks with regulation on that. So we were really happy when we could do a project over by um, the Between Resort and Sunset Grill that um, can be a model for potential, you know, learn an example of, of, a, of a good project. Um, it's It seems like um, you can get, approved, you know, you, it, every little area is a little different. And so um, even if you, so this is a good first step. Uh, but there's going to be a, a lot of education that's required uh, and little and, and nuances that are going to be different for each different characteristic of the of the sound. It would be wonderful to be able to just add more, um, you know, uh, a, a bulkhead or, or a breakwater that was further out so that we could have some um, sand accruing behind it. And that was one of the approaches we tried behind the town that was very exciting. We then we were going to just tie it to our existing boardwalk. There were all kinds of great ideas, but the subaquatic vegetation that was already there, even though it was not in, indigenous to the area, was established and that has to be preserved. So it's sort of a catch-22 sometimes with what we can do. I'm hoping that the regulatory agencies that oversee this, uh, the water, uh, CAMA and the other, would help us um, in the future to give us some more ideas because I think everyone agrees that uh, we need to preserve um, preserve these areas and, and increase them when we can. Um, so it's going to be an ongoing educational process, working with what we can do and seeing where we can improve these processes in the future. So um, from Al Glatkowski, the following question. Would the candidates support the construction of completely dedicated bike lanes on both the east and west side of Route 12 from the southern entrance into Duck and up to the county line with Kuratuk. Mr. Vondren. This is my first um, thought on it. I'm not quite sure I understand the question. Replace the multi-use path with a with just bike dedicated? Is that the question? The question is, would the candidates support the construction of completely dedicated bike lines on both the east and west side of okay. Route 12? All right. So I don't think there's room to have a total bike lane. My understanding because we had to squeeze every inch out of that town with planning of that, even the plants to make some type of separation. And they push for every every little square inch of space between the road and the multi-use path, if you will, or the walking path in through town and the bike lane. Um, I'm not sure that's 100% possible for the town to um, have the real estate to do that. Is it possible on the outsides of the town? I'd need more information, but I think it is. Mr. Whitman. In town, I don't see how we could like you said, like they've said, we've pushed for every inch along the, our sidewalks to separate the bike lanes from the road, uh, from the sidewalks with our garden area. On the north and south side, it'd probably be possible in the long range plans, but I don't see this as something that's happening right away. And the costs, I'd have to see what the cost would be before I could even uh, discuss it any further. Mr. Kingston. I think rather than a question, I think this is a good suggestion. I think he's asking the question about the north and south with respect to the multi-use path. And once again, I think it would be worth a study. Obviously, we focus on pedestrian and bicycle safety within the village, um, knowing that, in fact, we have the multi-use path. But the multi-use path is getting more use. And uh, dedicated uh, bike lanes on one side or on both I think would be an interesting study and suggestion for the uh, council and the and the staff to take a look at. Um, right now, there would not be basically enough room between the uh, the white line and I think the grass area, but in fact, there may be room there to shorten that uh, distance between the multi-use path and and the uh, the roadway. So 
I think it would, would be worthwhile to take a look at that as a study. It could be a very future project from the standpoint of, once again, but, but pedestrian and bicycle safety. Um, so I would say, uh, rather than being a question, I think it's a good suggestion for future consideration. Thank you. Ms. Thibodeau. Oh, thank you. I um, We do have, I'm, I'm very delighted that we do have a small but dedicated bike lane going through the village commercial area. Uh, and of course the multi-use path on both sides, uh, which has is not for the um, avid biker, it's more for the casual biker to share with uh, pedestrians. But yes, I think that um, there could be a, an opportunity to, um, in, ex, when the road is being repaved that DOT could get involved. I mean, I think we would outside the village area have some room for at least one side of a dedicated bike path, perhaps both. I'd need to have more information as to how exactly how much room, but once they, um, if they were repaving, I mean, that's certainly what, how, how Duck actually, one of the reasons I got involved civically was our, our very first path, which was all it was, was DOT before we were a town agreeing to allow us to have a line that that did separate the pedestrians and it's only in, been improved since then. This could be one more step towards improving, improving safety for those dedicated bikers that are going through town. I don't know exactly what it would connect to if we had it on the west side uh, once you exited the town because the up in Kerala, it seems to be all the way uh, that, that their multi-use path is only on the east side, but they may have plans to expand it on the west side as well. But I would be interested in, in pursuing that idea as we move forward with future planning. So the question is, do you support the construction of completely dedicated bike lanes on both the east and west side of Route 12 from the southern entrance into Duck up to the county line with Kuratuk? Mr. Bakaitis. I would certainly support it if it were possible. Of course, we can't take much of the highway away at all. That has to be a certain width. Um, <clears throat> I have my doubts, but like the mayor just said, I think it would make an interesting study. And that's about all I could say about it now. Mr. Ciano? Yes, I, I think, uh, yes, I would be in favor of it. I recognize that there would be, there would be, you know, obstacles that have to be overcome. But one of the things I wanna to bring to the council is not the no attitude, but the yes, let's try and find a way attitude so we can be responsive to the needs of our citizens. Um, I think it would serve a lot of value. First of all, it's very nice that we have a bike lane through town, but unfortunately it's for bikes going both north and south, which is somewhat, which is somewhat dangerous. Um, it would be good if we could get a bike lane on both the east and the west side. It would help in a number of other areas too. It would help with the traffic because if someone is going south on obviously on the west side of the highway, people in their cars are very nervous passing that biker because there's not enough room there. And that causes them to slow down and that backs traffic all the way up into Currituck. So anything we could do to provide a lane for bikers on the west side through Duck, I think would be uh, helpful all the way up to Corolla. I also think part of that is the concept of sidewalks on the Southern side of town. I've talked to residents up there, a couple who have kids who get off on school buses and they're, and they're very nervous, is nervous on that side, the west side, that they're on any sidewalks. I think that would be very helpful. Thank you. Mr. Bartlett. I think this is an excellent example of an issue that, that would benefit from, from input from the town folk. Um, I, I, think, I think it's a great idea, and I, and I would support it if it can be done safely. Um, we need to gather input from everybody, though, first. Thank you. So the next question is from Kevin Wright. What is your position regarding establishing a Dare County Library Services in Legislative District 3 to support Duck, Southern Shores, Martins Point, and Kitty Hawk? Mr. Blakaitis. I think it's a good idea, but I think we have I really think we have enough library services now. We've got one in uh, Kerala that we can use. We've got a terrific library down in, uh, is that Kitty Hawk or Kill Devil Hills? Um, they can work with us online. We have a, a spot at the uh, <clears throat> Southern Shores where we can deposit our books. Uh, I, I wouldn't shoot it down, but 
frankly, I don't think that that's one of the most important things that we could work on right now. What I've heard here tonight is there's far more important things that we could work on besides the library. And besides, you get in, you get some uh, going down to the library is fun. Ms. Thibodeau. Uh, thank you. I think I, we've we've visited this um, issue before. It's probably been about eight years or so, I, I, or maybe maybe sooner than that. I apologize. I don't remember. But um, there was I do believe there was some surveys done um, about this. Uh, I, this is, of course, a county function to add a library. Um, I don't I, I don't know that uh, this would be a huge priority um, for for the town to be involved in to expand um, the library services. But I do believe that this could be something that we could poll the uh, residents about and do a targeted survey for um, to see what type of interest there would be to pursue this. Um, as I recall in the initial, uh, when this was presented before, there was some space in Southern Shores that was um, perhaps the area and it the, the issue surfaced but didn't get a lot of traction at the time. Um, uh, I would agree that we have a wonderful library facility in Kill Devil Hills, but I agree that it isn't always easy for people to get to. Um, that maybe we have limited transportation abilities. Maybe we could, maybe we could encourage some, um, you know, Dare County ride share or, ride, or transportation, um, which is available uh, to come and help with that. Uh, I don't think it's um, something that's been on my radar as a, as, as a huge priority for the town of Duck, but I think a survey would be an interesting way to, to find out if the citizens are really asking for that. Mr. Bartlett. I, I would advocate for um, the town supporting that idea if, as, as Monica said, the, the a survey showed that that is one of their priorities. But I also wonder if, if it wouldn't be better to talk to the county about bringing some sort of a bookmobile up directly into the town of Duck, uh, bringing services to the town rather than even having to go to Southern Shores. Thank you. Mr. Vonjan. Uh, could you repeat the question, please? What is your position regarding Dare County Library Services in Legislative District 3 to support Duck, Southern Shores, Martins Point, and Kitty Hawk? I'm on board with the other council members. There would definitely be a study before we'd move forward to kind of put funds into that. Um, again, I look, look at that and I'd like to get more information on the question or the understanding. Uh, I need to be educated more. Are they looking for Duck to put more money to put into Kill Level Hills and improving the library system? Again, what surveys might point out or direct us toward that? Uh, some of the other council members have definitely pointed out that, um, yeah, it's just, there's a lot of big priorities out there. And at the moment, being in and out of the town as much as I am, I haven't heard a lot about a library. Would it hurt? No. Do we have the funds to do it? I'm not sure. Um, I'd recommend it also, they have those little library things that are planted throughout the town along the beach accesses. I've heard a lot of great success from that, but I think we need uh, a little more information and then to make more, a better decision on what's gonna happen or could happen. Thank you. Mr. Kingston. As uh, Mayor Pro Tem Thibodeau said, this did come before the council within the last couple of years. And this issue was being, or the suggestion was being pushed by the Southern Shores residents. And obviously they were looking for um, support from uh, citizens of Duck. Um, we did have that discussion. We said we would certainly support an initiative. It's completely a county function. Uh, the county at the, at the time could not afford to expand and, and get another location. The location was planned for, as, as, as Monica said, in Southern Shores. Um, I think it would not be necessarily a priority, uh, even though our population has grown. Um, we really haven't heard this coming from our citizens from the standpoint of uh, a need for or a push for a library. I think uh, we could certainly support an initiative, but I'm not sure we would want to put funding into that at this point in time. Uh, the other thing we do have is we have leave a book and, and take a book in the parking lot of the North, you know, North parking lot of the town of Duck. So we do have a facility where people can get access books. Um, the other thing is basically 
the libraries are becoming online functions. So you can order online and go pick it up. You can have it shipped to you um, or you can go online and, and get a book. So I wouldn't see this as a priority. It has come before us before. I think it's an initiative being pushed by another town. Um, I think they can certainly come back and talk to our council again, or we could get some public input on it. Thank you. Mr. Ciano. Yeah, honestly, I don't know enough about the workings of the public library system and the interrelationship between the cities and the county on this issue. So I'm gonna to have to pass. I don't think I can add anything to the discussion. Uh once more, what is your position regarding establishing the Derrick County Library Services in Legislative District 3 to support Duck, Southern Shores, Martins Point, and Kitty Hawk? Mr. Whitman. I would support it to the extent that I would have to see what our, uh, our citizens want to do. Uh, like Mayor and Mayor Pro Temp both said, I do remember sitting at a board meeting where this was brought up before I was elected to the council. And again, it was being pushed by Southern Shores, not the town of Duck. And I, like they say, we have other pressing matters more than uh, funding the library at the present time. We do have various spots around Duck where there are uh, little take me home library books, a number of uh, spots, including like someone said, in our town park. Thank you. So um, question from Kevin, uh, from Terry Rose. What is your position on eight or nine bedroom houses? Mr. Ciano. Um, uh, my position would be that, you know, we have, we have zoning laws um, that regulate that type of thing. And if you, my understanding is, and I'm not an expert on it yet, uh, but my understanding is that if you have a house that large and you have that many bedrooms, you have to have the appropriate parking space and you can't exceed certain ground coverage for the lot and so on. So I think I think there are regulations that would control that. But getting beyond the regulations, my personal opinion and my personal desire would not would be to not have houses that large in the town of Duck. I don't think there's a need for it. It borders on the concept of mini hotels, and they put a tremendous stress on the environment and the resources of the town and the area. So I would not be in favor of that. Mr. Vondren? Yeah, the issue with eight and nine bedrooms, that was put uh, pretty well there. There's things out there they are trying to control it. I definitely uh, do not support it. It um, puts way too much strain on us and plus, I already see the houses that are in the five and six bedrooms that there's 10 cars in the parking lot and their parking zone and everywhere. Um, I think it would just get out of control with that. It'd be crazy um, to have that many bedrooms and stuff. So I would be opposed to it. Once again, what is your position on eight or nine bedroom houses, Mr. Bartlett? I think that uh, that would be controlled by our existing zoning and other regulations, building regulations uh, for the town. Um, I, I personally don't care for it, but I, th I think we have things in place that would limit that. And I would be in favor of keeping those things in place. Thank you. Mr. Blakaitis. I would listen to what Mr. Chiano just said, so I don't have to repeat it. Now I'll go into <clears throat> something that most people don't know, and that is that some few years ago, you might be able to remember Don and and uh, the uh, the state limited our ability to control bedrooms uh, in such a manner that they said that we cannot limit the bedrooms, so we cannot control the number of bedrooms in a home. However, we've been very busy in, in the past years doing other things that will control the bedrooms. So that's kind of a legal thing. Um, we've been very busy doing that. We tried, we tried to do it with size. Uh, I can't explain it all here, but there's several different areas that we've considered uh, in building a home. And we've been pretty successful in doing it so far. Um, and of course, I've never run into anybody who wants to see houses that big in, in, our, in our town. Uh, 
that's all I think I have to say about it, unless somebody has a question. But every time this comes up at the planning board, we have to dig pretty deep to make sure that, that we're staying on the side of legality. Mr. Whitman? Uh, like Joe just said, uh, our zoning and one of our big things is the lot size. With our lot sizes, we can only put a certain size home with certain amount of bedrooms. As the lots get bigger, you can put bigger houses, but the bedrooms can only go up to, if I'm not mistaken, eight bedrooms. And the lot size, I think, is uh, 30 to 35,000 square feet. And again, we don't have lots that size in town. Ms. Thibodeau? Yeah, when we became a town, uh, that was uh, a moratorium was placed on building development. This was obviously 20 years ago because there was a concern about um, house sizes. Um, we, were, we inherited the zoning regulations of Deer County at the time and, and over the years have refined our own. And, and, and the state has, uh, as, as we've heard, um, has also taken some controls away from municipalities in order to control house size uh, over, the, over the years. So we, we do, I feel, have a very good system in place at the moment, which is dictated by lot size. And so therefore it does regulate, you know, an appropriate size per lot size on each, um, on, on the various sizes, because I am an advocate for personal property rights and, uh, do not want to over control what folks do with their size of their home. I mean, it's been said that, you know, it might not be a bedroom, but it might be a, two offices, some other things. Are people going to, you know, abuse things or, or uh, you know, perhaps, but, you know, you can drive down any street and really not be able to tell the difference uh, from our original development pr prior to being a town between an eight and a six bedroom. Um, parking limitations, of course, um, you know, and making sure that people don't park on uh, off off of the designated parking areas is something that we need to make sure we do. I've been encouraged too since we did put these regulations in. Uh, you know about the different the degrees of size of home based on lot size, which I thought was a reasonable approach and fair. Um, that a lot of the new construction in town, it's I'm always paying attention, have been fairly smaller homes. Um, many of the new construction in town are four bedroom homes or five perhaps. They're not always maximizing. Yes, people are adding on uh, because of their own need for their family sizes um, or their own enjoyment, but everything is being done, I think, uh, in a good way right now. And um, thank you. Mr. Kingston. I'm not a supporter of large houses. Several years ago, when we talked about the size of houses. I was a council member that actually voted against uh, what we put in place, uh, thinking that in fact, the square footage was too large for the town. It's kind of ironical because we talk about trash and we talk about traffic, yet we wanna build big houses with a lot of cars. Uh, as examples, a couple of houses in Southern Shores, 6,000 square foot houses, you'll see 10 or 12 cars there. When probably before it was a smaller house, maybe saw a couple cars. So I don't, I don't think Fat Duck needs those size size houses. Uh, I don't I don't support that on a personal basis. I think that you know the smaller houses help add to the atmosphere of Duck and help us leave some of the others. Now we do have ordinances and zoning in place to protect Duck, and I think they're probably to an extent uh, adequate at this point in time to control this development. Thank you. So I'm now going to ask our question reviewer. If there have been any questions from the audience, and if so, if she will read them. Uh, I'm looking. Uh, I do think I have a question here from John Park. Do you think the town council is responsible for advocating with Dare County for EMS ambulance service to provide reasonably consistent response times throughout the town? Or should citizens be responsible for advocating with the county since the town is not responsible for the service. Mr. Whitman. I think uh, okay. the county manager has spoken to the town a number of times on this issue alongside, along with the EMS director. Uh, in Dare County, Dare County controls the ambulance service in all the towns. And they have set their metrics up. 
and supposedly duck fits right in their metrics. You know, uh, other than that, I don't know what other, if the people in the town in town want to talk to the county, I let them go right ahead. We've spoken to them. Everyone has spoken to them. They've given us an ambulance on weekends and high traffic volume days. Uh, that's the best I can say to them. Thank you. Mr. Kingston. Uh, the town council uh, last year advocated by resolution for an ambulance in Duck. So the town council has gone to the county. By state law, the county controls emergency uh, operations, emergency medical operations within the county. So the town has no jurisdiction there. Um, an ambulance in Duck would be very convenient for us, be a safety for, for us. As we build a public safety building, we'll probably give consideration to a bay or an ambulance service. But as Mr. Whitmo was just saying, basically is the county controls the logistics of ambulances, where they're placed. Um, and I know they're in fact even short of ambulances uh, and that they, they go by the metrics and we're on the outskirts of the county when you get to Northern Duck. Um, I think the county supports that and we continue to advocate with the county and we have a good relationship with um, uh, manager uh, Chief uh, Collins from EMS and I know that she has put ambulances uh, as she can uh, up at the uh, Duck Fire Station uh, during the summer so that in fact they can respond to calls. But I think the council's on record is advocating that we'd like an ambulance in Duck. Thank you. Mr. Blakaitis. Uh, I'm not against an ambulance. Um, it's already been noted who controls it, how it gets here. The main thing is who pays for it. And it's not cheap because you not only get an ambulance, you have to pay for the people that take care of it. So uh, I, I don't have anything more to say about that. Whatever it turns out to be, fine. Ms. Thibodeau? I, am, I do support an ambulance uh, services in Duck and ambulance the town has, uh, has uh, put a resolution forward, uh, has also kept an ongoing conversation with the county. We've had good citizen involvement uh, from folks that have really pushed for this issue to be in the forefront and it has gotten good attention. Uh, in the plans for the new uh, public safety building, if we can get the Army Corps to work with us on that new construction, I do support having a bay for an ambulance. It may be a multi-use port, or I'm not sure exactly what the room and spaces need, but yes, having a good place for an ambulance to be docked in that new public safety building to me makes absolute sense um, while we're building a new building. Um, in addition to that, I'd like to have an ongoing um, information about response time. We have had uh, the uh, ambulance in duck on weekends and even more. It seems like the, 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 the working relationship is, is ongoing and improving uh, with Dare County EMS with, um, with our local fire department. And so I'd like to get some more data on that and have an ongoing reporting that we could see response times, what were the calls to duck and what, et cetera. But I also would like to point out that when we um, started having paid fire, one of the most um, things that I could really get behind when we were such a small town was the idea of EMS done by our uh, fire department. So we do have ongoing very close um, EMS services right here in town with our paid fire department. And that's just been expanded. I think that's a great service uh, that, that is, has, has been very beneficial for us. And I'd like to see those services increase as well as get more data on response times. Thank you. Mr. Ciano. Um, well, yes, I, I would say a couple of things. First of all, I think that the, the, the town as it has been and should continue to do, is advocate with DARE and work continually work with DARE to get an ambulance here on a, on a regular basis um, all of the time. Um, I, I think that um, we do have EMS, but there is a difference between EMS and what you get in an ambulance. Uh, there, are different, there are different protocols that each one is allowed to do, and um, they have a higher level of service and capability in an ambulance service. So I think as our town continues to grow, you know, where where our full time residency grows, our shoulder seasons get longer and and more well uh, 
populated, if you will, I think the need for an ambulance to be here and stationed at our public safety area is important. And I think we should try to find a solution to that even before we build a new public safety center, because who knows if the Corps of Engineers is going to extend the lease beyond five years for that property. And I don't think we should invest $12 million in a facility if we don't have a long-term lease. So I think we should do what we can in the meanwhile to get the EMS and the ambulance in duck. I think that's important for the safety and the welfare of our community. Mr. Vondren? First thing that came to my mind was opportunity. It was pointed out before, there's definitely a need. People have been putting this out there for the last few years. I remember going to council meetings this coming up. Uh, yes, we even require these some steps of our fire department members to be certain medical qualified. But as I stated earlier, they can only do so much. And again, I just keep on going back. There's an opportunity to do something here. People have voiced it. And I think we need to strongly look at this and put this toward the town to give them even a more broader look at what can be done. There's an opportunity to listen to the people and come forward and make it happen. Thank you. Mr. Bartlett. So to, to answer the question directly, I believe it is the town's responsibility, the town council's responsibility to advocate for ambulance service, increased ambulance service at Duck. Uh, and, they, and they've done so. I, I, I agree with what everyone has said here. I, the, the town council has, has already done that. The difference between the, the, um, the firefighters that are at the station now, when they respond to a medical call, is they are basic EMT certified. They can do certain life-saving things. The ambulance brings more advanced things uh, and the ability to administer drugs and things like that. I think as, as Duck continues to grow, that's, that, that's a no-brainer. We, sh we, we should have that up here. Yes. Thank you. Um, Ms. Sozinski, is there another question? Yes, I am here, and um, I'm sorry about that. I seem to have been um, muted remotely and couldn't unmute, but now I can. Um, here's one from Buddy Byram, and I think this is very going to be very brief answers. The question is, would you support a town ordinance requiring garbage cans to be returned to the house by the end of the day on collection days or incur a fine? Mr. Vondren. I say semi joke and I have experience in this area. There's, there's already a town ordinance in place, if I'm not mistaken, of 24 hours that it needs to be put back in. Um, to have our police or whatever to actually, I guess, make it stricter may or may not be a waste, I think, of our police force and their capabilities and so on and so forth. Um, it's been mentioned, trash is a big problem here. Um, I see it growing every day and the amount of trash cans that are out every day for some of these residents just shocks me. Uh, so that's where I think this question is also coming from is that there's such a large volume. I mean, it's out on our streets now in certain areas, five days a week. So it's gotten a big visual um, representation, I guess. It's something to definitely look at. Um, again, I do believe, and I can be corrected, please. Uh, I do there, believe there already is a town ordinance. So I'm guessing their question would, can we make it, can we make it stricter? Um, I don't know if I would be totally for that because the tourists, even after pulling cans in, the following day, I see cans out type stuff. Um, and to educate all the tourists and the visitors that come here to make it stricter, um, I think that might be hard to do. And maybe a little bit, um, our police force has something better to do. Thank you. Ms. Thibodeau? Yeah, I think that the uh, that having it uh, the same day pulling in and out with it would be very difficult to enforce. 
Uh, we do have an ongoing public education each week with a whole virtually new group of people coming in. Um, I think property managers can do more. And as a property manager, we've texted uh, this year our um, every different jurisdiction we deal with. We text them that night to remind them to put their cans out and then to put their cans back in. And I think that's really helped our company uh, because people just forget. And they, I mean, even, even visit, even homeowners that aren't at their house very often uh, forget exactly when trash in and out. Um, I do. So I, I would say, no, I don't think I would want to make a, an ordinance that would require that. Um, I do have, uh, there was an ordinance like that in Southern Shores. It was very difficult to administer. Uh, and they actually backed off of it, as I recall, um, dealing with property management uh, in homes in Southern Shores. So I think public education, I think um, encouraging um, some tools that we can use to um, remind people um, this texting was a great uh, solution for us um, and, and helping with tools like that uh, will go a long way. And I think um, we can, you know, there's, there are things we can do to improve public education. And I think that would be the best place to start. Thank you. Mr. Bartlett? I, I do agree with stricter enforcement of this. As, as Ms. Thibodeau just said, there are, there are different ways to go about it. I don't think it has to be enforced by the police. A civil fine can be levy, levied for that. Uh, one of the things I would advocate for is a position within the town that actually monitors this, not somebody doing three or four other jobs at the same time, but somebody dedicated to this at least during the tourist season, because that's when it is the worst, the absolute worst. Thank you. Mr. Whitman. I feel that uh, the question has been answered a number of times here. Uh, I know in our homeowner associations, we have an ordinance that they're supposed to be put in by the end of the day. They have our police department go around and police the neighborhoods. No, I'm not in favor of that at all. Thank you. Mr. Kingston. It's interesting because we're going to have this discussion at the council meeting on Wednesday evening as we talk about trash. Um, I think the town is third in line because I think the majority of cans that are left out are from rental houses. And basically, I look to the property managers that, in fact, to uh, tell those uh, basically renters that the, the cans have got to be in, you know, after the trash is picked up or the recycling is picked up. Secondly, I look at the homeowners associations to enforce their own regulations within the homeowners. And then the town comes in. Um, I would hate to see the town have to enforce that. We couldn't really enforce that with our police force. Uh, and I would hate to see the town go to the point where forcing homeowners and or HOAs to have uh, trash rollback. But it may, it may come to that if in fact we can't solve the problem of getting the trash cans off the street uh, after the collections take place. So uh, it'll be an interesting conversation Wednesday evening and probably won't be the last conversation. And I think the new council will probably have to deal with this as they take their seats in December. Thank you. Mr. Blakaitis? Uh, no, I certainly would not agree to, uh, to, to a fine for that. Um, we in uh, where I live, at one time, we hired somebody to take the cans in, the kid, the school kid, anybody. And it worked pretty well for a while, but then we couldn't find anybody else. And I think that if you're gonna really enforce that, that uh, you have to have somebody that comes around and puts them in for you. It's just not going to happen the other way. And as Don just said, we'll, you'll be talking about it on Wednesday. Thank you. Mr. Ciano? Yes, well, I, I, uh, first of all, I agree with the concept generally that trash cans should get off the street as quickly as possible. The question is how and how do you make that happen? I think Mayor said the right thing. The town is probably third in line. It's up to the people and the homeowners associations, but also the property managers. I think a large portion of our problem is rentals um, and people not pulling them in and out. And I think there is probably a way to pressure and monitor that with um, the, the property managers to make sure that happens. I think we've also exacerbated the problem. For example, in the Northern part of Duck, I live in Sanderling and I walk my dog every day five days of the week because of the trash collection schedule, there are trash cans out on the street. So you never know whether they're coming in or coming out. And I'm hoping that the council is gonna review that and put together a schedule that is effective in getting cans on and off the street in one day in each area, rather than having them staggered and being out there. Because 
It's not adding to the character of our neighborhood to see trash cans on the street five days a week when you're walking. And I think that's why a lot of people are raising this issue now. Ms. Slazinski, do we have any more questions? One, one more brief one, and maybe we can just have a show of hands or one person speak and then ask if other people agree. Um, this is from Al Gletkowski, and he says, it's about recycling. How do the candidates stand on continuing the recycling um, service uh, as the county is already having challenges with it? Mr. Blakaitis, do you want to take this? I would say continue it. That's all I have to say. Okay. Mr. Bartlett? Yes, I support continuing. Mr. Ciano? Yes, I would support continuing it until there are no further uh, outlets for recycled material. Mr. Kingston? I also support continuing a uh, recycling program. I think it's good for the, the environment. Ms. Thibodeau? Yes, I completely agree with supporting the recycling education for the uh, for the ongoing, you know, for the visitors that come in. And uh, I want to give a shout out to the town for the commercial recycling that we have in place that is also extremely well used. And uh, hopefully we can continue to find markets for the recycled material and keep folks educated about what we actually do recycle. But I'm in favor of it. Mr. Whitman? I support it. Thank you. Uh -huh. Mr. Vondren? Uh, I support a recycling program. I think we need better education. Uh, I'm knee deep in this. And when I see these recycle cans, uh, the town has done very well. They print out these labels and put on the cans and so on and so forth, what should go in them and what shouldn't type thing. And I hate to say it, I think I see more often than not, like I'll even say a simple example, plastic bag. It's big letters on there, no plastic bags. But I can guarantee you pretty much with 90, 95% certainty, especially when we get visitors that don't, you know, people don't think about reading things or don't care or whatever, that our recycle cans, I bet you nine out of 10 have a plastic bag in it. I also would put a high percentage even when I say plastic bags, even the dog poop bags, I see those in the ones for the beach accesses at, at homeowners associations. And I just uh, shake my head. So again, uh, hopefully you get people to, to listen and learn and watch. Um, the recycling, there's time, and I don't know if, I believe 100% you hear on the internet or the news or whatever, but I think at one point, and maybe some of the other candidates or town uh, could answer this better than I could. Excuse me, Mr. Vondren? Yes. I'm sorry, your time is up. Thank you. So that concludes the question and answer segment. And to learn more about the candidate's ideas and philosophy, you may visit our online voter guide, vote 411 at www.vote411.org. Now we will hear the candidates' closing remarks. We will go in reverse order from the opening statements. First, Mr. Ciano. Thank you. So in closing, what I'd like to say, if elected, these are the things that I'll commit to, to those voters um, in the town, non-resident property owners and so forth. First of all, I will be fully representing both resident and non-resident property owners to the fullest of my ability. I will exercise my role as one of a steward, uh, carefully and purposefully managing the resources you have given the town as taxpayers, and I will make sure that they use judiciously. I'll, I will act, actively solicit and listen to your needs, concerns, and issues and work to address them and represent you. I will do all I can to foster communications, involvement, engagement, honesty, and transparency. I'll work hard to maintain Duck as the quaint ocean to sound village 
where residents and visitors alike enjoy the pleasures, experiences, and relaxation that all of our town has to offer and that we all enjoy so much. Um, also, I believe it's time to um, make sure that we're exercising the fullest physical responsibility as possible. We're a town that's staffed to handle a population of 25 to 35,000. Um, we don't have that population here all year, but we do have to handle it when it is here. And I commend the way we do handle it in our police force and our fire department and our town staff. Um, but, but we need to leverage that now. We can't keep adding because we're here. Uh, we have enough people to handle 35,000. We should be able to manage that throughout the year. We need to support our business community. As you'll see, if you look at the budget, tax revenue is vital. Um, it's, it's a very important part of our budget. We have to have healthy and vibrant businesses as well as very um, well-maintained property and satisfied homeowners. Um, we have to address some issues uh, that are kind of endemic to the whole Outer Banks. One is uh, of housing for workers so that they can get here to do the job. That may not Excuse be, me, case, in duck. There may not be case in duck for it, but we might have to help support other communities with that effort. Thank you. Mr. Blakaitis. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm off here. Uh, well, as I said before, uh, I'm, a, uh, I'm sorry, I'm a member of the planning board and I've been there for 14 years. Uh, I will support duck residents, business owners, new residents, as well as work with all members of the town council in whatever endeavors are undertaken to improve our town and serve our community needs. I will definitely continue to act in a professional, ethical, and honest manner while serving our community. There's a lot I could say, there's a lot I can't say. I think the shorter, the better. Thank you. Mr. Whitman. In closing, I'd like to thank the lake for the energy they put into the schedule in this forum this evening. It's been an honor to serve the residents of Duck for the past two years as a member of the town council. My desire is to continue serving on the town council begins and ends with a commitment to our entire community, permanent residents, non-resident property owners, our visitors and our business owners. With your help, I pledge to continue my efforts to guide Duck forward in a positive and constructive manner to preserve the quality of life, of today's life, with a keen eye towards the future. Again, I would appreciate your support when you vote this November 2nd. Thank you. Mr. Vondren? Yes. Again, I'm a representative for you people. I'm listening. We've talked about traffic, bike, bedrooms, storm water, library, ambulance, trash cans, recycle, so on and so forth. I'm here to listen for you guys. I'm out here. I want you guys to exercise your right to vote. Please get out there and vote. Let it, your vote be heard. We're here to represent you. I want to represent you. I can do this job. I've been through the experience of doing all different projects and going through all sorts of different situations. I know I can do this. Please give me the opportunity to prove it and show you that I am listening. Thank you for everybody that's involved and good luck to everybody. Bye. Mr. Kingston. Once again, thank you to the League of Women Voters for conducting this candidate forum and to all the duck voters whom it's this evening. In summary, I will stand on my record of the last 12 years on the town council, especially the last 10 years as your mayor, providing leadership and working with the other members of excellent councils and excellent staff. I will continue to represent the property owners, resident and non-resident and businesses equally and fairly. I have supported and continue to support the major initiatives of the town. I've established over the years and maintain a high level of relationship with the other town mayors, county chairman and officials, state representatives. And I've also established relationships with other elected officials across the state as a result of my involvement with the League of Municipalities. I trust my opening statement and comments 
have been of assistance to you this evening. I am available and would encourage anyone to contact me if you have any further questions. That being said, I would once again sincerely appreciate your consideration and vote for my re-election as a member of the Duck Town Council. Thank you. Mr. Bartlett. Thank you to the League of Women Voters for the opportunity to answer these thoughtful questions. I hope that I have made the point that I am by nature a collaborative individual who believes in building relationships and seeking input from all in my approach to problem solving. I hope that you will consider electing me as a member of the Duck Town Council, but whether or not I am ultimately successful, I'll continue to be a part of the solution for our town. Thank you. Ms. Thibodeau. Thank you to the league and thank you to the fellow candidates. It's very encouraging to see this much interest in running for town council. I'm very encouraged and I'm uh, uh, Mr. Mooney's uh, family is in my thoughts. I'm running again for town council because I really love the town of Duck. Uh, a resident for over 30 years. I've been extremely proud of what we've done since incorporation. Uh, I stand on that reputation as being involved and listening to all stakeholders in the community, uh, non-resident owners, residents, visitors, and businesses. And I feel uh, uniquely qualified in my position as a person who's raised my family here, who continues to work and, <coughs> live in the town, um, and works in the, the, in the vacation industry that I can really uh, be very tapped into all these different stakeholders. Um, I'm very proud of what we've accomplished. I do feel we've been very fiscally responsible, but I encourage more involvement in that and, and we'll always try to, to uh, explain and, and develop better processes so that everyone understands uh, our budget, uh, what, what, we, what, what our priorities are and all of that uh, as much as possible. I, I look forward to continuing to help guide every citizen who's interested with any question that they have um, and listening to everyone that's, uh, that has a question. I, I will take the time with anyone. I really hope that, um, that, that the voters will, um, will allow me to serve again by voting for me for the next town council. And again, thank you to the league and thank you to my fellow candidates. Okay, thank you all. This concludes the Town of Duck Municipal Candidate Forum. We wish to thank the candidates sincerely for their participation, the voters for their attendance, and for their submitted questions. We want to thank the technical team again for setting up and managing this webinar. We will post the video of this forum on our website, www.lwvdare.org, as well as on our YouTube page and other local outlets. Vote 411. Most candidates this evening have participated in the League's online voter guide called vote411.org. We encourage you to look at this one-stop shop website that voters may access on their phone or on their PC. Simply key in your address and you can view candidate information, their philosophy statement, social media links, and their responses in their own words to questions we posed and more. Be, please check it out. Vote 411 live date is October 6th. I will now return the program to Ginger Webster, our coordinator. Thank you, everyone. In closing, remember, the last day to register to vote by submitting a registration form is this Friday, October the 8th. You may go to the Dare County Board of Elections website to print out a registration form. You may also register to vote during early one-stop voting from Thursday, October the 14th to the 30th in two locations the Dare County Administration Building in Manteo, or the Kill Devil Hills Town Hall in Kill Devil Hills. Weekdays, Monday to Friday, 8 to 5, and Saturday, October the 30th, from 8 to 3. You may also register through the Department of Motor Vehicles if you have an, an NC driver's license or ID card. If you wish to vote by mail, any registered North Carolina voter may request an absentee ballot by mail. 
No excuse is needed to vote by absentee. To request an absentee ballot be sent to you, complete and return the NC absentee ballot request form found on the Dare County Board of Elections website. You may also call the Dare Board of Elections and an absentee ballot request form will be sent to you. Of course, election day is Tuesday, November the 2nd. If you plan to vote on election day, your polling place is as always Duck Town Hall. Please see the Board of Elections websites for all these details and more. We encourage you to join us as we strive to make democracy work. Thank you again, everyone, for participating this evening.